Welcome. My name is Kevin Dickey, and I have partnered with Dan Goldberg to implement an algorithm for resizing images based on scene content. This algorithm, known as Scene Carving, is based on the paper Scene Carving for Content-Aware Image Resizing, written by Shai Avidan and Ariel Shamir of the Mitsubishi Electric Research Labs. So, Kevin, what's wrong with the normal image resizing that we know about right now? Well, Dan, it has a tendency to take things out of the image that we want to keep. The concept of image resizing is not a new one, and it is something which photographers have dealt with since the earliest stages of the industry. Cameras would produce an output of some size, which was easy to develop and process due to its standardized format. But this format was not necessarily visually pleasing on, say, a page of text, which would force the image to a different size. For many years, image resizing consisted mainly of removing content from the edges of some images. This process is straightforward to do both for analog images as well as digital ones. We can reduce the size of a film image using a knife to cut away a part of an image in the analog case, or removing pixels from the edges of an image in the digital case. The concept of image resizing is not a new one and it is something which photographers have dealt with since the earliest stages of the industry. So, Kevin, I wish there was a way that we could resize an image without distorting it or changing all the stuff that we want to keep. Well, Dan, it seems to me like you could do that by removing little portions of the image, like slices. And we could do that in a manner where we carve them out. Maybe we could slice carve, or scene carve. Whoa! Scene carving allows us to resize an image while maintaining areas of interest. Now, in this image, we want to crop it while maintaining those buildings on the side. Simply cropping the image will cut off the edges of the buildings, which we didn't want to do. As you can see here, the seam carving method maintains those buildings untouched while removing seams from the center of the image. Boy, Kevin, this sounds like a nice algorithm. Uh, it sure does. I bet we can break it down into a couple simple steps. Seam carving consists of three general steps. The first of these steps is the computation of an energy function for the scene to describe critical image areas. Next, we can define image seams based on the previously computed energy function. Finally, with the seams located, we can remove the seam with the lowest energy from the image. These steps are repeated until the image has been reduced to its target size. As Kevin just said, the first step in the seam carving algorithm is computing the energy map. Here's an example of an image that we would want an energy map for. Now, the goal of finding an energy map is to try to find areas in a scene that have a lot of information that we don't want to change. So, in this scene, we don't want to really change the car, because that's important, and we don't want to change the trees. And areas that we don't really care so much about are the sky and the pavement. One way to find the energy map is to use the gradients. Uh, now this is simply uh, so bell filter convolved with the image first in the horizontal direction uh, where you find the edges horizontally uh, and then it's computed in the vertical direction uh, and so these two images are then combined the horizontal and vertical gradients are combined uh, to give you the edge map which is going to be your energy image So in the final energy map, you see that on the tree and on the car, there's a lot of edges, but then on the areas that we don't care about, there aren't really many edges. Now that we have the energy map calculated, we can go in and find seams along the image. In order to find an image seam, we have to find the energy values in the row and determine the minimum. From there, we look at the three values below that and determine the minimum of those and we keep stepping along until we reach the bottom of the image. Then we have a completed scene. After we find a vertical seam, we can repeat the process to find all the vertical seams in an image. 
After the vertical seams are computed, the horizontal seams are then found using the same method. Hey Dan. Yeah? Now that we've found all the image seams, what do we do now? I don't know, Kevin. What? I think we should remove them. Before we remove all of the seams, we just have to identify one seam with the lowest energy across the image. It's shown here for the vertical case. We repeat this for the horizontal case. The lowest energy seam is shown here in red. Here's an example of the vertical seams being removed from the duck image. Now that we've resized the image in the horizontal direction, we can continue for the vertical case. We notice here that the seams that are being removed are largely from the top portion of the image, where contrast is low and edges are minimal. So here's the final image after it was resized with seam carving. And you can see down with the ducks, they stayed pretty, pretty nice. And uh, that's what we were looking for in this. Uh, unfortunately, in the background, you can see there was a lot of distortion, and that's because that area was very smooth relative to the uh, water and relative to the tree on the left side. Uh, so that's why that got distorted. And that brings up a little bit of the limitations of this method. But how could this method have limitations, Kevin? Well, Dan, it seems like sometimes you might be removing parts from an image that you really shouldn't be removing, despite the fact that they have a low energy function. The image here demonstrates just what can go wrong if you do a little too much seam carving. You'll notice that the car looks like it has a flat tire, and that now some of the edges along its sides are not completely straight as they were previously. This is a result of seam carving. Also of interest is the C-pillar in the car, which now has a wavy bump in the back. Another noticeable artifact here is the waviness in the fence, which is a result of the seam carving in the horizontal direction. In the case of the car image, we have distortions that we don't want. And this occurred because the car is actually pretty smooth. And the way that we're finding the interest areas is by the edges. So there is a way that we can account for this and that is by manually putting in a box around the object that we want to save. Now this box is actually just really high values in the energy map which will prevent seams from going through it. Seam carving using the previously described method allows for the changing of this scene without the distortion of the car, as seen above. Boy, Kevin, exploring seam carving was a lot of fun. It sure was. I'd say seam carving was pretty effective. It allows us to resize images while keeping critical scene content in the output images. Although, one of the negatives is that occasionally it goes a little too far and it tends to distort an output image. Yeah, but it brought us closer together.